Okay, hello folks and welcome to Bards and Books. I am Usman and I'm joined as always with my good buddy Nick and today we are talking about book three of Dungeon Crawler Carl. This is the Dungeon Anarchist's cookbook and what a ride here. I mean, as always, we're doing this on audiobook um, and obviously Jeff Hayes, another fantastic performance here. So why don't we just go through our initial thoughts, you know, our, our general feelings about this one how did it compare to the others what, what what are your thoughts nick on this one well uh a great job great job well done it's also got a, a guest star in this one as well for the audio which is okay. uh the uh oh, was it the Drink. critical drinker <laughs> critical drinker critical yeah. drinker the not a bad addition did yeah did you enjoy that part. yeah it wasn't bad it wasn't bad it def definitely tell it's different audio Different yeah. where the voice didn't sound uh, sounded like a d different character. You know, you don't really notice, but if it's if it's the audio is kind of all done by one guy, and then yeah, it, I'm it, glad it worked for you. But are you are you aware of the critical drinker? Do you know who he is? Have you seen his? No, I actually no, I haven't. Yeah. Okay, so he's you? he's a he's a pretty prominent book uh, YouTuber. Okay, so he has a channel. He's got like over a million subs. Wow, and he um. He mainly reviews and discusses like TV and film. He's kind of a critic. Oh, so, yeah. Nice. No, I've I had to take a haven't got a chance to take a look at him yet, but uh, definitely will. He did a pretty good job with that, you know. Oh yeah, uh, he has he has tons of videos and and uh, they're always pretty entertaining and pretty humorous as well. So if I'm I was already fully aware of who this guy was. And so when I heard right at the beginning, you know, featuring the critical drinker, I'm like, Oh, really? I'm like, mm -hmm. what? Yeah, it, it surprised me that there was somebody in there. It doesn't show on the title card or, or with the uh, who it, what it says, who's um, uh, featured as voices on in the an audible that he does any bit on there. So it doesn't say another name, usually they put it in there. But I yeah. guess because it was a shorter part, maybe they just did a little feature in the actual thing. Yeah. So, but, uh... so, so let me tell you about about that. So mm. the critical drinker, that's obviously his, you know, his voice. And um, it for me, it personally, it kind of it, it might have taken me out of the story a little bit, be, just knowing who he is, you know, like I get that. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he obviously obviously this part was like solely written for him because of the dialogue in a lot of his videos, like at the end of every YouTube video that he uh, he he makes, he always says, you know, he always says that's the you know that's the end of this video. Go away now in his accent, like <laughs> go oh. away now. You know, he always says that, and and he had that line in in the mm. book, go away now. So it was obviously purely written for him. That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat that he's able to do that. I wonder if it was like written in later when they knew that he could get the part or was it done by jeff hayes originally or yeah, whatever if it's something know. different in the actual physical copy of the book maybe i don't know but you know what that mm. was a nice surprise even if it took me out a little bit i still enjoyed the appearance. i get <laughs> i get what you're saying with that it was kind of neat to have a different voice in there but it definitely felt this is separate from i don't know if it was just because it was done at a different booth maybe it, it didn't have the sound booth quality as, you know, I don't think you did it with Jeff Hayes or whatever. I'm not so, sure. Um, but that just, just the, the change maybe took us out, took us out a little bit, but overall it was kind of, kind of neat. So anyways, um, was this a, was this a good one for you? How did it rank in terms definitely, of the other? I, I, this was definitely one of the better ones so far out of the series. I think like the first one was pretty good, got you into it. And I like, you know, I gave the second one a high rating because it was still pretty good. But compared to the second book, this one really, really took it up a notch, you know, mm -hmm. like the story wise and things actually happening. You know, it wasn't just, you know, some other but somebody else's story, which is a lot of the second one where it was like, oh, you know, these NPCs a story and you're just a side character. Uh, this is actually like about Carl and the other uh, crawlers. And I really dig that. 
and yeah. total um, like a large amount of like head turners and like what 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 happened what yeah you know a lot absolutely. of shock and twists so i mean this one for sure how about yourself you like this one so at the end of the day i enjoyed it just as much if not uh, more than the others but originally i was a little worried because as soon as we as soon as we dive into this one we're thrown into the the iron tangle right which is like this whole train it's like a big train station it's all like a train trains mm -hmm. level <laughs> yeah right so i was a little he i was a little weary there because i didn't know how i felt about the whole just being on trains or whatever the whole time mm. uh, but it worked out you know e even if it might have been a little confusing with the whole like the line system or the portals or whatever yeah um i ended up enjoying it it ended, it ended up working for me so it's a yeah. sideways elevator level you play video games they have the elevator level where you're constantly yeah, yeah. going to different floors and it's just a run of bad guys it's basically that but with trains so yeah no it was it it was good it ended up working it ended up being a a solid solid entry in this series Mm -hmm. And man, yeah, you're right. Like the twists and the reveals and stuff. So good. So good. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So definitely a solid entry in Dungeon Crawler Carl. And let me just say right off, right off the bat that you were absolutely right about Mordecai being some like dingy little toad in this one as compared <laughs> to the last one where he's, he was an incubus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I enjoyed I enjoyed him as a toad. I, as soon as he what as soon as we realized he was that. I'm like, man, Nick was right again. <laughs> you yeah. know, even, uh, even if it was I'm, just in passing or whatever, you were right. He's just a little toad I'm, warrior in this. And like his his like croaks between when he talks. I, at first, I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> but <laughs> but quickly you're like, oh, right, he's a toad. <laughs> and it was just I toad love that they add the sound effects in for all that kind of stuff that he does. They do the croaks. I liked how he was a uh, changed the voice a little bit when he was an incubus to this and adding the croak croak features in yeah uh mordecai in this one not as big of a character he uh mm -hmm. that's right it's booted in his with his anger i wonder if that's we'll right. see more of his anger in in other ones because he was angry in this one and yeah he, a... he ran into that dude that he knew and uh got banned for for most of this book and you know what i actually could kind of appreciate that a bit because he was seemed to be doing most of the work for for Carl and Donut. You know what I mean? Like they were getting yeah. by pretty easy with him, and so having him out of this one, it it uh, made it a little more interesting. Kind of had to make your own decisions. You couldn't just go off uh, asking him, "Should we do this? Should we do that?" And it's kind of like in this one, it was like, "Well, Mordecai, you know, says he can't save everybody. Yeah. Fuck, it. Fuck it. I'm just gonna do yeah. it. I'm gonna save everybody." Gonna put my all my my effort in. It seemed like they were just running, you know, um, running to running to Mordecai for every question or situation. So I'm glad he was taken out of this one mostly, and I think that was deliberate, you know, for, yeah, for that for that reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of a little bit of suspense too, and just like, oh, I don't know how we would treat the situation. It's kind of it was kind of nice that he wasn't as big of a character in this one. Sure, it could have been helpful for some situations, but for most of it, you know, the trains and the battling, and it left a, more of a uh, a chance for other crawlers like uh, Dave Batista and uh, Amani and Ellie to kind of like take up that space, that communication space and asking questions and, you know, of other people who might not know the best kind of situation, yeah. the best kind of uh, option for the situation. So he got a different chance to, you know, find other opinions. Instead of being yeah. somebody who's like grizzled old veteran that, you know, you know, it's miserable the whole time. Yeah, more opportunity to intermingle with other characters and discuss stuff. So that was cool. Yeah. So I appreciate build out other build out other characters, which is kind of cool that you we got more of a character profile on some of these other characters that we haven't seen for a while. And that part that he lost Mordecai, you know, uh he he got the special box. I ended up getting this anarchist cook cookbook, the name of the, the title of the book. Yeah. Really interesting addition to the story. Kind of takes the place of Mordecai a little bit as well. For instead of like 
mm-hmm. you know, asking somebody a question. It's like kind of going through this little cheat sheet of past crawlers and what they've done. And you kind of get even more story and, and backstory for this, the, the dungeon crawl and the dungeon crawler world. Uh, really interesting mm-hmm. addition to this book. I, li- I really liked the idea of it. I liked the, you know, you don't tell anybody about this. It's a little kind of like thing that's going to help them get ahead. Yeah. That nobody can know about. Yeah. That it's, execution was done very well. Mm-hmm. And I, I love it. Yeah. When I, when we get the dungeon anarchist cookbook, you're like, Oh, that's the title of this book. And then you, or the story and you, and you realize that um, what it exactly is. It's like a, it's given out by the system into this yeah yeah into this whole world and we get all these past experiences from from past crawlers and stuff it it adds so much more flavor so much more depth to this story it was awesome Mm -hmm. and i i wonder where it's going to go from here like he's obviously be going to be a big help um i wonder if he might lose it in the future we'll see (laughs) that's definitely something that might come up i can imagine like somebody being like how do you how are you getting this information is yeah, he gonna trip up. up somehow yeah is he gonna be is is he gonna be able to like you know talk about it with somebody outside because he can't talk about it in the system if the system finds out that you let anybody know about this book or you, if the system thinks that you're gonna lose this book or somebody starts asking questions or thinking that how is he getting this information they'll take the book away from you so I wonder if it, if he goes outside, like to like a dead show or something like that, where the system is not uh, there, if, if he is going to talk about it or something like that to somebody. Hmm. If he can That's talk really about it to to donut or something, you know, on on a dead show, it's be like I can't, don't say anything, or whatever. But this is what I got, or is it just like not even going to try? You know, he can't. <laughs> he can't tell Donut. Donut. Not gonna, a chance with Donut, right? <laughs> not with Donut. Yeah. <laughs> this one, I found like Carl's kind of like stopped being a dick. <laughs> it was not as much of a dick in this one, whereas in the second yeah. one, he was kind of like tripping up and saying some things that weren't very nice to Donut. You know. Yeah. Uh, this one, it kind of turned around, and he's like, you know what? I'm not gonna just do my own thing. I'm gonna try to help other people. You know, trying to caring about donuts feelings and Katia's feelings and stuff like that, like kind of changing around, which I think is a, a great, you know, movement for his character. Yeah, no, he's definitely a little more aware of, of donuts feelings and whatnot now. And, and it's good, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a turn of event of events for him here because this whole time he's just been getting shafted left, right and center, right. With mm-hmm. like decisions made, from the corporations or whatever, but here we see him get some breaks, like mm-hmm. like the cookbook, and with the AI being more disgruntled now because of the Borant Corporation, and and he's getting a little more, you know, the crawlers are getting a little more help from the AI. He's being a little more lenient to the crawlers now because he's he's not he didn't like the decision that the Borant made with the veto, right? And, mm-hmm. and uh, the celestial box is being taken away, so. So that's that's going to be a big help. I think I think it's from this point going forward that the AI is kind of like this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's like more even more. Kind of says like it's like this for now, and it starts the system starts to get a personality as the dungeon progresses. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, usually the the dungeon doesn't get you know disgruntled. The system doesn't get disgruntled till later. But uh, he's like, oh, you know, it's happening early or whatever. It could flip back and forth. You know, if Carl starts, you know, wearing shoes, then there might be a problem, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but overall, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it seems like it's, at least for now, working on their side a little bit, at least a little bit, kind of giving them a little hand with all the, uh, with all the rooms that it gave out as well. Like yeah. having that little bit of base building aspect is kind of cool. That could be very helpful in the end, you know? Yeah, big time. Making bombs and stuff like that. I'm kind of interested in seeing where that goes. I like the creative aspect that Carl has where it's like, how can I, you know, make something or build something to yeah. suit the situation? 
I always find that very cool that he yeah, problem yeah. solves that way. He's definitely a thinker. He he, he does mm -hmm. well, and that serves him very well. So it's cool. I yeah. like how they leveled up in this. You know, it was it wasn't he was really kind of trailing behind grinding. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It wasn't really just grinding. It was more like you know he he made these smart decisions. He did these cool, uh, risky things, and he just got like the biggest boost, you know, here and there. So. Oh yeah. Now that he's on the leaderboard. Like people are gunning for him a little bit. They've had some issues when they were at the Desperado Club, mm -hmm. which I mean, the expansion of the Desperado Club is kind of cool, very interesting. I d I don't know how like even like like the gambling area like. It's so dangerous. I like. Yeah. I don't know why would anybody spend any time there. You're already gambling enough with your life every day yeah. in the in the crawl. Even with the risk guards, it all gambling. Right? Huh? Even with the guards, they they were in trouble there for a bit. Oh yeah, but I I, I I'm very curious to see how that goes plays out too. Like if uh, their two bodyguards, if they become, you know, part of their team, they're saying like Mordecai was saying that they were, they could like hire. NPCs that they might hire these guys out because they seem pretty attached now that they uh, didn't blame them from getting it for getting attacked. So that might be cool. Yeah. Uh, not very talkative characters, mm -hmm. but <laughs> Donut seems to like them. Like the, she's perched on their shoulder, or some one of them's shoulder, right? It's from yeah. Time. So went to the so strip club. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So not only does he meet like Monty in there at the Desperado Club, you actually kind of get a little bit of a conclusion to uh, Frank Q and Maggie Mai. Not Maggie Mai per se, but Frank Q, yeah. you get a conclusion for him there. That's right. You know, he's fully given up, just getting plastered at the Desperado Club. You know. That was a tense moment. That was very tense. tense moment, but it's yeah. like, you know, kind of seeing what's going on, you can see he's, a, a, you know, I didn't really worry about Carl there. But uh, that ring that he gets, we're gonna. I, I can't wait to see what happens with that. That's gonna be. That's definitely a nugget for later books. Just be like, yeah. hey, you know, this is gonna be. This it's gonna be a a problem for him for sure. I I can't see him giving out it up. He's being very, you know, whatever Mordecai. You're not my real dad. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I, I could see him putting it back on. It's like I need these yeah. stats. Yeah, because he know? still has it. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely that might present an issue because that was a big thing. And, and with Frank, we finally got their story of their daughter, Yvette and, and how she died and why she died. Right. Why that, why that, why, uh, Maggie, my strangled their, her daughter to death, which is like, yeah, you know, like the whole story with that, that was so dark. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, yeah, I almost kind of felt for them, but you know, mm -hmm. even yeah. Frank knew it's like, ah, you know, I did everything I could for my daughter, but I like still talking. He's like, I kind of know I'm a shitty person, you know. You definitely felt for Frank there in that moment. It was interesting. You didn't think that would happen, yeah. but you felt for him. And and very interesting to see what how we run into Maggie because Maggie seems like she's gonna she's, be like a force, you know. She's gonna be unstoppable. Very vindictive. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yes. like just you know. I, she's waiting for that, you know, revenge, mm -hmm. that revenge plot. It's going to be big at some point. Do you do you want to talk about Brynhild's daughters and the, the team up there with Hecla? Do you want to go to oh, that man. point yet? With Hecla? Uh, <laughs> that, we just jump that right was, to that? That's probably the most shocking moment of this book, honestly. Yeah. Uh, the so, team up was cool. The, like you know that like you know Carl's like ah you know this is gonna happen. Something's you know I I don't trust her. You know I mm -hmm. I had this you know I've been that's kind of said some stuff and I know something's going funky here. I don't know how this is going to play. So but, let me tell you something with with mm. Hecla. I think the most the most. Uh, thoughtful moment for me where I had to just take a moment and reflect on what I just what I just listened to was um, when we learned that Hecla is so Hecla's party with Eva right mm -hmm. Eva uh, the orcish or the forearmed it's, thing. she's like a what are the snake people called again right um, right right the Naga right yeah. half Naga half orc or something like that mm -hmm. and their whole party of women so 
when we learned that from Katya that Ava is she knew Ava, right? And Ava was kind of yeah. out of her mind. She's kind of she's kind of crazy a little it bit. Didn't really say that, but like you know, that's it's the it whole thing that. was that Hilda they didn't know her from the work at the school that they were both doing, but then mm -hmm. Hilda was her therapist. Yes, you so know. Heckla, Heckla was her uh, psychiatrist, psychiatrist. Psychiatrist, that's it. Heckla is now the leader of this group and planning all these like devious things, like these, you know, you controlling know. controlling Ava. Ava is doing the dirty work for her, right? Mm. You learn that, you know, who's who's the crazy one here? It's it's the psychiatrist, like yeah. That, that well, was and great. Learning a little bit of the truth about like you know what happened to hecla's husband too mm -hmm. well, the, the, that's probably at the, that's a little after but you know kind of learning that she basically left him to die came back and like from his corpse like killed uh a monster with like his rib bone or something like that stabbed him with a rib bone that's how yeah. she got the special box that gave her her crossbow that's right machine gun crossbow mm. which is a cool weapon now um that Katia has, yeah. <laughs> that Katia has. They're kind of going around, not saying it, but like that, you know, the betrayal there. Let's go right back into it. Let's go back to the what happened, like going into the train. They team up with Carl. Brynhild's daughters team up with Carl to go save some more of the of their team. Katia becomes a ram and becomes kind of a, like a, a scapegoat. So they plan to That's... kill Katia, which in turn would, which in turn they would, um, would activate Carl's rage because you know you know the the system has portrayed him as this crazy person right who like laughs when he chops off people's heads and stuff yeah so I think Heckler was counting on him losing his shit there mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't because no. that's not who he is he was he was, he kind of knew that this was going to happen they both kind of knew that they're like they're trying to play each other there they're like oh you know goes kind of playing around like you know but you can't say that i'm trying to get you kind of the whole yeah. time uh very interesting way of going around it <laughs> mm -hmm. a very devious plan there carl was on top of it watching the health bars and like look and with the glasses that donut got uh from her uh sponsor box being able to catch the uh heckle attacking Katia, let like if yeah. that didn't happen, Katia would probably not be around. The sponsor box that Donut got from Princess Denadia. I wonder if Princess Denadia, you know, because she's watching the show, kind of knows that you know um, Donut is going to come in contact with Brynhild's daughters and and Hecla. And I wonder if because Hecla's she's probably watching a lot of different crawlers, uh, knows about the uh, that uh, Hecla had those special bolts for a crossbow mm -hmm. and that's why she yeah. gave her those glasses maybe that's part of it kind of wonder how deep the plot goes like how much you know can the sponsors help out yeah I mean. but i like how heckla was in turn building her whole, whole party around this weapon right it, it it got amplified by the amount of women in your party mm -hmm. so that was interesting and now that they're all broken up now that ava is kind of running loose right without hecla to kind of it seems like hecla was kind of keeping her in check within the party but now that ava's running loose you know seems like she might get back to her crazy ways she might you know who yeah knows what's gonna happen what's going to become of ava oh, we keep talking around it i don't even think we we've, we've even said that <laughs> katia killed Hecla yet. <laughs> Katia killed Hecla. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Katia killed Hecla. Obviously, like for me, the most shocking moment. Oh my gosh. It was, I mean, I probably, we probably should have just started from the very beginning and said that was like the craziest thing in this book. I did not expect it at all. Just no. absolute shock. You know, it's like, you know, definitely kind of expected somebody to die there on the Brynhild's daughters during that thing. Or maybe, I mean, Carl was kind of putting this as like, ah, we'll just go our separate ways, this kind of thing. And, you know, I kind of thought, okay, this is kind of like, you're gonna have to be standoff, you know, 
it's probably going to be like that for a while and maybe they'll keep contact maybe they'll turn it around later but no just out of nowhere goes crazy tries to kill ava and then Tadio kills Hercula, gets the bounty now. They get like, you know, like second, she's second on the list. So big bounty, you yeah. know, crazy amount of levels. And now shuts down Brynhild's daughters all together, just in like one quick move. Mm-hmm. Kills one of the top crawlers. That's, That's right. you know, not even on purpose, totally by accident. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, I, and now we know that the bounty is indeed gold that they mm. get it's not xp yeah. it's nothing to do with it. so we were both wrong there so it's yeah. gold that's the it bounty. is gold <laughs> yeah it's their your currency it's i mean they also got not she did get tons of xp as well for killing yes. somebody at that high level right yeah. like she was yeah. pretty up there mm-hmm. now katia is like pretty top and was you know up there in the uh level uh pretty high in the levels now in the team yeah where she was really low in the beginning when they first meet up with her, like behind. Now she's jumped up to be one of the top people. So what do you think of uh, this whole portraying people? I don't know if it's just Carl, but portraying people very different from what they actually are. Because you know they make Carl out to be this crazy, murderous dude. Yeah. So what do you make of that? What do you think that might imply about Lucia Mar or other characters? I think that maybe Lucia Mar might not be as bloodthirsty as she's portrayed maybe maybe she's just you know very scared and like maybe she's not so bad maybe she's just a little girl that's lost in there she's pretty young <laughs> maybe i'm not maybe sure. it, it's pretty um, convincing with her with her with what we know <laughs> yeah i mean maybe some of the other uh characters that you see that might be more heroic or not you know, as heroic you know like the uh yeah mm-hmm. the african uh soldier there or or the uh um crocodile shotgun guy maybe they're not super nice because they don't say anything bad show anything bad about them but they could be just as bad as hecla maybe maybe it's kind of portrayed as you know a hero for on at least on the on the uh crawler show what is that called yeah the update yeah, that, that show. I know what you mean. <laughs> but I yeah. think we can safely say um, that Quan, you know, the guy who mm. got the celestial item? Yes. He's clearly he's clearly a dick. I mean, <laughs> Very he's obviously clearly a dick. using his item to advance and not giving a crap about any other crawler, kind of hindering them because we learned that. Yeah. He's, you know, hindering everybody that. else, breaking down all the trains, yeah. pushing the collapse faster and faster, you know. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people like him now. I think no. I think he's kind of shot himself in the foot later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, just shows you how powerful those celestial boxes are. I hope yeah. that I mean, maybe Carl gets one eventually. But uh, you know, it's it'd be hard to for them to get such a like a a powerful item and the, that really just breaks the game for yeah. Carl. You know, I mean, he's already gotten the anarchist cookbook. I don't know if he'll get anything better, but it'd be interesting to see what happens with any other celestial boxes. Well, it's odd because I'm I'm examining the covers now, like, you know, for the fourth book, let's say, you mm-hmm. know, you, it's right on the cover there. You see that he has got like this this mask thing over his his face a little bit over his nose. Yeah. And mouth. So it looks like you might get another cool item. We'll see. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. it's it'd be about time i mean he needs some new gear at this point yeah, i yeah, mean yeah. like he hasn't really gotten anything you know new maybe some better jacket or something <laughs> just some yeah. clothes you know yeah. maybe another toe ring <laughs> maybe he'll upgrade his his boxers new boxers maybe he'll get mm-hmm. briefs <laughs> there you go man thong yeah. uh <laughs> what did you make of the um the tickets that donut got for because she got a kill, remember? She got a skull. Yeah. She got that that those little tickets to kill people in her party, so she gets more stuff. Um, I I wonder. I mean, she got rid of the one that said Carl. Yeah. Uh, and she said she got rid of the one that said Katia too. But I mean, we'd have no proof that she did. She said she did. Uh, did Katia pick up the Carl one? She saw a donut throw it away yeah you know she has eyes in the back of her head 
did she decide, you know, maybe I might need this if they come after me with the Cadia one. These are some uh, some some dark theories we're coming across now. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> but there might be a push, but I mean, they wouldn't bring it up in the book. Otherwise, it's going to yeah, come yeah. at some point, you know. We'll get more of that. Maybe some other parties that we come to love will have this sort of debacle, you know, with these tickets. Yeah. I, I have a feeling one of them, one of them or both of them are still in play. I can't imagine they bring them up just to throw them away. Let's get to another point. There was um, one of the other very heartfelt moments in the story is when we get that message from uh, Brandon mm. to Carl. And we know that yeah. Brandon's dead now because he <sighs> chose to stay and yeah. fight in, in the previous level. So mm -hmm. that was pretty sad. But knowing uh, what he said about his brother, Chris, and mm. knowing that Chris is now this rock golem and he seemed to have he seemed to have a very drastic change in personality. Like he seems a little more bloodthirsty now. And we know that he kind of respects Carl. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? What do you think is going to become of that? I, I don't, that's hard to t tell. I think, uh, I mean, absolute heartbreaker with the Brandon thing right in the beginning. Yeah. Massive amount of loss. And it's just, you know, because he wasn't there for their last, the, the, the fall of the last the collapse, of the last, um, level. Mm -hmm. you know you kind of get a, a rush of like missed you know uh information like missed uh messages or whatever and it's like to have that oh you know deceased crawler message from deceased crawler absolute heartbreaker you know yeah and uh brandon was such a good like a nice heartfelt character probably one of the last ones in dungeon crawler world at this point like that, that was actually a fully innocent character not a dick at all and you know went down like that it was pretty brutal i mean like yeah. even imani has like a bunch of skulls on top of her head you know right mm -hmm. was the, the last kind of innocent character i think you know so kind of definitely sad um but his brother chris i mean the silent type guy you know yeah. seemed pretty like soft-spoken nice and um, the first book to see him kind of like do a full personality change. It's going to be interesting to see how that, uh, you know, how that works. And if that, it kind of affects other characters, like is the primal thing going to affect Carl is, you know, uh, or have any other characters kind of changed because of their class, you know, yeah. maybe we'll notice more of that in the, in future books and future characters being like, okay, you know, I was kind of like this. And then I changed my character and I had a change of heart. Chris blocks the rest of metal Lark, And like, so there's no communication at all uh, between Chris and Carl at all, or anybody that Carl's talked to uh, mm -hmm. or metal Lark's talked to. So we just kind of like get snippets of he went here, he went there, you know, the rest of Mar metal Lark that he went with, they're all dead. He ends up actually going to, uh the desperado club and uh talking with frank q and ends up killing him so frank q doesn't even get to chance that he was planning on drinking himself to death waiting till yeah. the level collapse doesn't even get to make it to the level collapse you know mm -hmm. gets put out of his mis misery early and uh yeah. i wonder we don't know really why he did it you know yeah he's been chris uh has been told by like Carl about like, you know, Frank Q and Maggie Mai. But other than that, you know, no reason just to go on and off a guy at, at the Desperado club for it. Yeah, definitely when a major shift. Up. Yeah, definitely a major shift with him. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested to see what becomes of him because it seems like he's going the route where he respects Carl, but mm -hmm. I don't think Carl's going to agree with, with you know what what chris or yeah what chris kind of aligns with and there might be some sort of falling out there some sort of moment where it's like you know don't meet your heroes kind of thing and, yeah uh, i and I, so we, I can agree to that yeah so we might get, write that uh, down that's happening <laughs> yeah we might get a sort of falling out there and especially at the end you know at the end we learned from audette she was going to mm. say something about chris right about yeah about chris and then she got blocked 
Yeah, uh, muted out. Yeah, muted. So we know there's yeah. something about Chris. Something we don't know. That's just major about Chris. It's a whole new thing with that and and uh, Zeb, like, mm -hmm. kind of like, lose Zeb now, which is you know yeah. another person that was kind of, it was for abhorrent, but like, kind of on Carl's and Donut side, kind of lose yeah. that, one of those people that was kind of been backing Carl a little bit. So I can only imagine that's going to change in the later books that they're going to not going to have the backing that they used to losing it, a lot of their help. Yeah. It seems like the Boren corporation does not like Carl and the things, the choices that they're making, mm. but being the enemy of the Vol Voltai, we know that the Voltai sponsored Carl now and gave him that pill to see, um, see portals or see something, see through portals. I don't know. See through portals. Yeah. So that was an interesting moment, you know, for a minute, I actually thought like, okay, I know, I think this pill might be a little, a little worm thing that's going to start controlling him because that's what the Valtai are, right? Yeah, oh, I think it's but Valde. The Val Valte? Yeah, Valde Corporation. Valde, yeah. sorry, Valde Corporation. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we know that Carl or Valte is trying to help Carl here with the pill and whatnot, trying to get on his side because, mm -hmm. because the Borant system seems to be against him so the Voltai is trying to get on his side and we know the Voltai and the Borant have a dispute so definitely some very intricate uh thoughtful things going on here and then maybe it's because of agatha and like because maybe he knows a little bit too much with agatha maybe. you know that they're like hey we better get this guy on ourselves we don't we're not supposed to be affecting this game at all but that's right Agatha's got some things in her cart Mm -hmm. that shouldn't be in the game yeah and she's sneaking through everything and not being visible by the cameras you know yeah maybe Especially that's why they're like here you go just don't <laughs> quiet now <laughs> don't yeah, say nothing we'll here at the end right agatha mm -hmm. she just magically Rolls appears able to go down the stairwell yeah amani Something's tries to stop her and carl's like no, 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 no. Don't, don't even say nothing. Don't say nothing. Yeah. I don't so, know what's up with Agatha, but that is something absolutely intense. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's going to be... I. We won't see fruits of that till way down the line. I can't imagine they're going to let that one, you know, come up quick, sooner rather than later. I think it's going to be quite a bit down the line till the Agatha mm -hmm. story comes to fruition. Yeah. More endgame you know, stuff. Oh yeah, she's sneaking straight through. You don't even see her. The last level, you didn't see her at all. Yeah. You know, this level just at the end, like surprise. Here I am, <laughs> still kicking around. Did you forget about yeah. me? I really like the uh, uh, the station mimic, uh, mm -hmm. mi mimic source Rex or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> massive, massive mimic. Oh uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So speaking of that, mm -hmm. that was probably the second most um, mind blowing part is when mm -hmm. Carl gets dragged through that portal, right? Yes. And he's he's in the he's in the room with the the mimic and Prince Maestro, who is Gruel now, mm -hmm. right? Prince yeah. Maestro King is Gruel, the god. Yeah. When he Just gets sucked into that portal. Oh yeah, I which I mean, it was a surprise as well in the first place because we thought yeah. Prince Meister was killed. Yes, that's and right. Surprise, surprise, he's not he's dead. Not. Absolute, absolute, like heart stopper. They're like, oh, <laughs> hands yeah. grabbed onto his ankle. Yes. Oh my god, it's happening. Stuck, he's being pulled in there, like the death challenge, and mm -hmm. you know, at the end, just just fighting through that, fighting to survive using the special invincible semi invincible potions or whatever, you know, yeah. the size of gruel too. I mean, the yeah. move was ingenious. What he was trying to do, like send him in there away from us, get him to kill whatever's there, but we're not going to be there anyway. So, but, uh, getting that kind of battle, like, you know, life or death, you know, doesn't even really like not even a chance going to attack. Just how do I hide and wait it out to his, his time here. And it's just like, he can insta kill you. He's a God level, you know, uh, monster. I think he said like level two hundred or something like that. Oh man, something, something wild. <laughs> yeah, and just like 
just try to dodge, try to get out of there. Scary. Uh, well, you know, tense, I should say. Um, yeah, so we know Maestro's alive. And, mm -hmm. and not happy. Yeah, not happy. But that whole dynamic with their mm -hmm. family. So we got Princess Formidable, who is Princess. Katia's sponsor. What a, what a name, too. I love the names. <laughs> they got great names. Yeah. We got King Rust, Prince Maestro, Crown Prince Stalwart, which I think is Stalwart. Maestro. Yeah, Maestro was yeah. like disowned. And then Stalwart okay. yeah. killed Manasa because he thought he was trying to kill Carl. Yeah. Which he might get disowned, or he he's their hope, like, you know, that's kind of the play. If that happens, then they go see eldest daughter, which is Princess Formidable, mm -hmm. who is a who opposes, sponsor. Who opposes Stalwart, their mm -hmm. enemies. So and Maestro as well. Yeah. 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 So she's gonna be a big help to them, you know, mm -hmm. an ally okay. there for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh gives a uh, caddy those those god killing bolts i mean it wouldn't it won't be easy to use those i think it was like it, get, it lets them if you shoot them in the eye it gives you 30 seconds where the god's no longer invincible and they can actually die in the game because yeah. otherwise they can't die even if they even if you kill them they just you know get a lifeline and pull them out of the game yeah take off the vr goggles but uh <laughs> there might be a lot more killings outside the the dungeon <laughs> it'd be it'd be interesting to see you know how that goes yeah. down mm -hmm. but uh oh what else here oh the all the bosses and the, the uh carts the big uh the big uh uh how do you say it like it's like a mechanic the biggest mechanic with the carts is like the the rail the rail fixing carts with the big portals on them that sends everything to the abyss yes which is a, such a neat idea you know instead of like oh the trains go around in a loop send the send the trains back to the beginning no 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 just get new trains <laughs> <laughs> eat the old ones in a big bin i like the engineers i like yeah. that they're like this these oh. scary like double torsoed <laughs> great great character creation right there mantars let's yeah, go the mantars yeah half man half man <laughs> half man half man <laughs> so they're good like, they're like viking style you know? oh yeah the very valhalla-esque yeah matt Dinman does some great character design like from the mantars to um the italian uh sheep herder yeah right. like miriam dom uh, and yeah. her two goats that she has left, I believe it's Bianca, which we don't know too much about. It's mm. just a giant goat with big titties. <laughs> I think <they're, laughs> that's all I've got on her. I believe that's what it's, uh, the character that the, the, that goat is. And then Prepotente, which is actually, he's on the leaderboard as well. Right. Uh, and uh, kind of went through the same process as uh, Thonut with, a, with her pet treat and became a talking character which i think right. is now my favorite character of, of dungeon crawler carl is really 100 percent okay just the just this just random streams just ah yeah. <laughs> and just talking absolute shit just like i shall kill you in your sleep and eat your bones just <laughs> And then just gets, you know, Miriam Dom just like his hits him in the head and love that. Mm. Great, great character design. He's just like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just a great character. I hope we see more of them. You know, uh, I, I hope they don't get killed off right away. Because <laughs> that's definitely my favorite character so far. What else would we miss? I don't know. I that's all I have. Lee Jun and Lina. All right. I, it's interesting. They're They're definitely cool support characters, you know. You might yeah. might work together again in the future. Um, as I saw your by your face there, you're like, ah, you're not the eh. most interesting characters out there. I forgot Lina. about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lena's yeah. got a cool class, you know, where he's she's like a demon person with like right. chain whip hands and that kind yeah. of thing, and she's right. very like clinical and like. Carl's like. 
I got an idea. And she's just like, that's stupid. No, (laughs) you know, very, they're still, you know, very interesting. They're like, yeah, Carl's at the end. It's like, yeah, no, we can't (laughs) work together. There's no chance. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad you're not on my team because we wouldn't, we'd be button heads constantly. This would not work, you know? Yeah. Yeah, But you know what, on that note, I think, I think it's really interesting how Carl has sort of taken lead um, with all, like, or most all of the crawlers, and mm-hmm. they're kind of forming this this unit now. You know, he's gotten all their chats, and yeah. um, you know, he's like fist bumping them and getting their chat information, and and forming this sort of giant what coalition or something. Yeah, this unit just like to help each other. Big, you know, it's kind of like a form almost. You know, just like yeah. a community form, just like yeah. everybody. Here's what works for me, and instead of like everybody working you know, for themselves, which was kind of like the second book. Like they're just like, he's like, there's colors here and I feel bad, but I got to work on me. And this one, he's just like, why, why am I doing that? How is that going to help me? You know, yeah. by like secluding myself and just working on myself doesn't really help. And you can tell that I think he's got the right idea in this book. At least I think it's worked better for him to kind of like work as a team and help people than, it's kind of like I'll do my own thing. It didn't really work out. Yeah, that so, was nice. And yeah, definitely more of a community aspect here now. And it's cool to see all that different character development. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, you know different character classes and you know seeing how they all work and fight together. It's uh, I, I yeah. can't wait to see. I hope they have more like big battles with like lots of characters soon. I think that's going to be needed for the later levels. You know, you're oh, going to yeah. need to have a, a much larger party, people working together to take down these major bosses in the later mm-hmm. levels. Because, because what other way is there? Like no, <laughs> you yeah. know, you, you need. Well, to play. I mean, with Carl, with yeah, Carl. most of his most that's of his right, battles, Carl. yeah, he's just that's a you different know, story. <laughs> bombing up or whatever. I'm sure we'll get like you know, he's probably going to do more. Yeah. crafty ideas than yeah. working as a big team but we'll definitely see more from like other crawlers if he keeps in contact with them like yeah. you know the the healthcare group or you know dave batista's group they're gonna see a lot more of that uh i mean i guess one thing we should talk about is zev you think about talking about zev at all and the new character that's taken over for zev which was heckless yeah. heckless oh, uh, right. sp- uh um Right, right, right. Media manager. Let's see here. Because she was a uh, yeah, former Loda, Cadius. Loda. Well, but Cadius changed yeah. parties, and now she has seniority, I guess. <laughs> so. I guess just, you know, yeah, Loida is like at the, you know, seniority or whatever. She's part of Bloom, which is like... Is her name Loida? Big... Loida, yep. Okay. Loida, Loida was uh, taking was a part of uh uh heckless group yeah. heckless sponsor or not sponsor sorry heckless uh media manager yeah and um i guess you know was very pushy i didn't know what happened uh zev said you know she had some issues with her family i, I don't know if she was like being pressured yeah. by her family she's getting you know uh, going to re-education, right? One of the maybe words they use. They're sending by the corporation, maybe. Yeah, you know. sending Zev to re-education. I don't know what that means, but that can't be good. That um, can't. Yeah, maybe she yeah, was too uh, too lenient with Carl and Donut, uh, and they want something, someone more strict. Because this is from Borant, correct? Mm-hmm. The media Borant. Manager. Yep, she's that's so, the Borant people. Who so we know Borant the... don't really like them. <laughs> I mean, Carl is kind of you know done some things in their favor and been you know by talking about like the skull empire and like pissing them off you know they're pretty happy about that and but we also know that but they're kind of like bored and they are kind of you know yeah but we also know about the whole veto situation i don't think that was good at all that might have been the tipping point you know Mm -hmm. seemed like a major thing Definitely, definitely. And then also killing Hecla, which was probably a top runner for them. I mean, they kind of do that on purpose, though. They want them to get killed. So, yeah, definitely some intricate 
stuff going on here, man. This yeah. Is- I mean, I'm I'm interested to see what happens with Zev. Uh, yeah. Lloyd is kind of kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not you know. Yeah. Causing some issues and like watching like them like hawks and you know limiting some of their out, outside influence where they yeah. get like help from a debt and stuff like that where yes. they can't get that anymore you know or mm-hmm. not really or a debt yeah. might get in trouble or she doesn't really care and we'll get in trouble anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. What do you think for the next book? For the next book, so I know it's called the the Gate of the Feral Gods or something mm. similar something like that um i think i think that level will be more intense because what what level are they on now level six or five five or six five yeah they're level, they're level five because level, level six five. is when the when the gods come in like, right. like when 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 uh, people from outside the uh right. dungeon right. can come in but uh it's level it's, five it's, going it's, into level five that's at the end they're like they get to choose what quadrant they go into right donut gets to pick Right, so they're going into this air quadrant now, right? Yeah, they're going to the air quadrant, and I think it's like a dwarven fortress or something like that, or like yeah, something along those lines. So we have uh, some idea. Like air fortress, yeah. Yeah, and, so we have some uh, idea of it. Uh, there's also the night gaunts that are as one was one of the options for the air quadrant, which is where uh, Carl's like cloak is from, and it'll like if like a. Uh, like his gloves that sh- sit off the followers of Grohl. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you, uh, if the, he sees a, the people from the Night Gaunt when he's wearing the cloak, that'll piss the Night Gaunt people off. So maybe yeah. he'll have to take his cloak off or, you know. I'm interested. always interested for seeing like what the, what the number is, the standing for current crawlers in the game. How many people are left, you know? Because it's always going yeah. down. Sometimes it's always more going rapidly. Down. Uh, this one, they yeah. didn't lose as many. Even like Bourne right. says, like we're surprised about how many of you guys are still alive. Yeah, don't expect that for this one. So I feel like yeah. this, they're gonna see a big drop because they're mm-hmm. trying to get this thing over and done with as fast as possible. Mm. You know, so I think this one, this floor is gonna be quite a bit more deadly. Yeah, so, I'm excited. I'm yeah. stoked. We're gonna get to it as quick as we can, and we'll be back to chat about book four (laughs) Mm -hmm. so we'll end things here um yeah so looking forward to book book four a lot of interesting things happening here i'm excited to see what's to come and thank you everybody for tuning in to bards and books and we will see you next time for book four and i'll be joined by nick once again so nick thanks a lot for joining me and we'll see everybody next time all right later cheers